Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So today I've got breaking news out of the state of Illinois, a state that in my opinion is just weeks away from a, a dystopian future, a future where the Constitution and the Second Amendment no longer exist. We're talking about their so-called assault weapons ban, mag ban, and you know what? Parts bans, registration, databases, you name it. We've got a big update. Let's talk about it. Hey, real quick before we get started, I've got some of the best subscribers on the internet, hands down, some of the most supportive people that you will ever find. So if you are not a subscriber, make sure you join the community by hitting that subscribe button, that little bell notification to let you know when new videos come out, and a thumbs up is always appreciated. And jump down below in the comments. That's a great way to join the conversation. So with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on here because things are really bad in Illinois, and I think more of a spotlight needs to be shined on this because this is, it's like a different country. I mean, this type of stuff happens in third world countries and it happens in other countries, but it's not supposed to happen in a country where we have constitutional protections. But you know, when constitutional protections are ignored, this is what happens. So in Illinois, people are already subject to registration and databases and a FOID card and you know, all that stuff. But in just a few weeks, people are gonna be subject to confiscation and they're gonna be subject to criminal charges for having something that is clearly protected by the constitution. And so that's a big deal. Now the people of Illinois, they wanted help. So they reached out for help and they got it in the form of lawsuits challenging that state's ban. Now these lawsuits, while they're ongoing currently at the district level, uh, they decided to ask for injunctions from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, emergency injunctions barring enforcement by the state, at least until the cases can be resolved. Now that went up to the Seventh Circuit, they were heard by a three judge panel and the three judge panel decided that they were going to, well, not issue injunctions on any of these cases. So what happens? Well, we have four different petitions now to the full en banc panel of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. These, these four are all different and in, in each way challenging something that has a, a slight nuance to it. Let me go ahead and show you which ones these are and the, the four petitions we're talking about. Now, the four petitions that we have here that were sent up to the Seventh Circuit for a request for a rehearing on Bonk are going to be Herrera, Beavis, N-A-G-R, Beavis, Langley, and Barnett. Now, these three petitions that you can see right here were all denied by the Seventh Circuit, and I'm not really sure why they were denied. There doesn't seem to be any dissent that comes along with each one of these. As you can see at the bottom, it just says, the petition for a rehearing and a rehearing on banc is therefore denied. And they all pretty much say the same thing. Order, plaintiff appellant filed a petition for rehearing and rehearing on banc on November 17th, you know, different dates. No judge in regular active service has requested a vote on the petition for rehearing on banc and all members of the original panel have voted to deny the panel rehearing. Now you can see here in a tweet from Hannah Hill, she is uh, with the NAGR. She tweeted that just in the Seventh Circuit denied us on bonk review for the Illinois gun ban case. There is literally now nowhere to go but SCOTUS, where we're already awaiting an answer on our approval for emergency relief. Now that emergency injunctive relief is currently sitting in front of Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. I made a video about this in the past. She is the one that has oversight of the Seventh Circuit. So she alone could provide injunctive relief that would stop this from happening or stop this law from being enforced once January hits. So she can single-handedly put a stop to this unconstitutional law. Now, because the Seventh Circuit decided to deny the rehearing on Bonk, a letter was sent to Justice Amy Coney Barrett, and it says, Dear Justice Barrett, I am counsel of record for the applicants in the above captioned case. Applicants noted in their application that they filed a petition for rehearing en banc in the United States Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit earlier today. The Seventh Circuit entered the attached order denying that petition. So she's been notified that they denied their petition for an en banc rehearing. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these cases are still ongoing at the district court level. They have not been resolved yet. This was an appeal that was sent up to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals to try and place an injunction against enforcement of this law before the district court even had a chance to rule on this. So this is kind of one of those things where it happened in the middle of a case, right? It was sent up to the Seventh Circuit. 
usually what happens is there'll be an order for an injunction or there will be an order denying an injunction at the district court level and then it goes up to the circuit level right where they'll take a look at everything that happened down at the district level and they'll make their decision this one was a little bit different they obviously they asked for that emergency injunction in the middle of that case so that could be one of the reasons why they denied it on banc maybe they wanted to wait for the district court to finish up you know all of that proceeding and then they would make a decision but the problem is is that we're on a time crunch here i mean we're talking just again a, a few weeks before this whole thing is is set to take effect so really it's it's just in the hands of the supreme court justice now so obviously that letter was sent up to her she's going to have that information and she's going to know now that it's it, the ball is in her court she is going to be the one to decide whether or not this this new you know so-called law is going to take effect or not and so she's going to have to look at this through the lens of Bruin, right? And Heller. And she's going to have to look at all of these things and determine whether or not at least, you know, the plaintiffs in this case have a good chance of winning on the merits or whether or not it infringes on people's constitutional rights and an injunction should be enforced until the case makes it all the way through the Seventh Circuit completely and maybe even on bog uh, and then goes up to the Supreme Court after that. But she is the one right now that holds the key to whether or not uh, people in uh, Illinois, you know, suffer what the Illinois government basically passed in just a couple nights. I mean, it was incredible. This whole thing was just completely rushed through. And in a state where you really didn't even have a Second Amendment to begin with because of the Floyd card. I mean, if you have to have a card to practice a right, then, you know, you're asking for government for permission to practice something that should be a right. It's, it's a privilege, but still, it just continues to get worse. And if nobody stands up and nobody stops this, then it's going to continue to get worse in states across this country. And so it, something has to be done now. Regardless, it's, it's in her court, and she's the one that's going to make the ultimate decision whether or not it takes effect come January. So this is pretty big news. I mean, it's a, it's a totally unconstitutional law. In my opinion, you know, doing this now for close to 11 years, there's not many states that have one that are, that's this bad. I mean, we're talking about regist registering parts, right? So you got to register parts, you got to register ammunition and all of the accessories and things like that. The, the good thing about this, if we're going to take anything good out of this, right, it's the fact that the number of people that are actually going along with this is very, very small. The amount of civil disobedience here is so massive that at least that you know gives me some good feeling that people are not complying with it. I mean, we're talking about what is it? 99.9, .9, I believe it's 99.97 percent uh, is is the total number of people that have not complied. 99.97 percent. I think it's 0.25 percent right now that have actually complied with this law and have registered anything. And we're talking about 6,000 something people out of 2.4 million. Uh, that have actually gone along with this. So again, the, the numbers are on our side, people that are saying they're not going to put up with an unconstitutional law, and that's, that's fantastic, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that it's still going to take place, and as long as you have law enforcement out there that's willing to enforce an unconstitutional law, then there's going to be consequences to that. And so again, I think that all needs to be considered by Justice Barrett, and we'll see what happens, but hopefully she comes out with something soon so people aren't stressing all the way down to the wire to the very last minute. Uh, so again, hopefully she provides some type of relief in this case, at least until the arguments can happen. I mean, arguments can't even happen yet. They threw this thing together overnight and now people are supposed to comply with it that fast. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know about that. This is all happening today. It's all just kind of breaking news and uh, it's, you know, it's a loss for Illinois, but we still have a chance. Uh, we still have a chance. So anyway, I want to let you guys know about that. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like button, that subscribe button if you haven't, and that little bell notification to let you know when new videos come out. Thanks again. Have a good one.